morning, everybody. I'd like to thank you all for joining this webinar for the Grandparents, Older Relatives, Raising Children RFP. Um, my name is Ed Junkins. I am the program manager for the Grandparents, of Older Relatives, Raising Children program. Uh, and we will be conducting this uh, webinar this morning. Again, I thank you all that joined the call, and I look forward to you all applying for this RFP. Um, here with me today, uh, I will majority of, uh, majority of this webinar will be done by Jatina Givens, uh, who's Assistant Community Living Specialist. Uh, she works hand in hand and with these programs and other programs we have in the department, so she'll be leading this today. Um, go ahead. So the Department of Family and Support Services um, is, the, is divided up se of several components, several divisions within one. Uh, there's children's services, youth services, domestic violence, veteran services, workforce services, homeless services, senior services, and human services delivery. DFS has launched a strategic framework. Uh, the mission of the department is working with community partners. We connect Chicago residents and families to resources to build stability, support their well-being, and empower them to thrive. The priorities of the department is to deliver and support high-quality, innovative, comprehensive services that empower clients to thrive, Collaborate with community partners, sister agencies, and public officials on programs and policy that improve Chicago and lives and advance systematic changes and inform the public of resources available to them through DFFS and its community partners. Steward DFS resources responsibly and effectively. Senior Service Division, who are we? We are the division that's designated as a triple A. We are the area agency on agency for the Chicago, for the city of Chicago. In their role, Senior Service Division advocates. We plan, we coordinate, we fund services for older adults especially those in the greatest social economic needs, living alone and those age 85 and above. Together with our service providers, we provide vital services such as congregate dining programs, home delivery meals, and access to benefits. The grandparent Older Relative RSP. The goal is the Title III E, go Grandparents to Older Relatives Raising Children programs to help educate and support grandparents to older relatives by providing counseling, support groups, and gap filling services so that they can provide the best care for their families. Changes we want to keep in mind, this is going to be performance evaluated based on the number of assessments conducted, the number of clients receiving counseling services, support group services, and gap filling services annually. Performance will also be based on the percentage of surveys completed on program participants, and also we are going to be watching agencies required to report demographics and submit invoices on a monthly basis. GORRC services provide support, education, and training to grandparents or older relatives through individual or group counseling, support groups, and gap filling services to purchase a limited supply of goods and services. GORRC services also offer a temporary break from caregiving by placing the minor child or children in a safe environment such as day camps, summer camps, after school programming, or tutoring. Many of the caregivers themselves are older individuals with the greatest economic and social needs. Using GORRC services support strengthens the ability of caregivers to continue to provide care for the minor child or children, increases the confidence of the grandparent or older relative, reduces unwelcomed feelings, feelings resentment, grief, and overwhelming exhaust, exhaustion for the caregiver. GORRC services specifically target grandparents or relatives ages 55 or older who live in poverty, are a minority, live alone, who are frail and or have limited English proficiency, or those who are age, over age 75. Services are also targeted to caregivers of persons with intellectual or developmental disabilities. The program provides assistance to caregivers regardless of economic status. DFSS Senior Services Division receives a referral for GORRC services through the Information and Assistance Unit. DFSS processes categorizes the referral and forwards via email and or fax to the selected respondent. The selected respondent will contact the client or caregiver to initiate, coordinate, and conduct the GORRC assessment. The selected respondent will determine eligibility, type of services needed, individual slash group counseling, support groups, and or gap filling services, and make all arrangements for the delivery of the services. And that is the GORRC referral process. And also, it's not here reflective here, and I apologize for that, but you also, as a, the select agency will also be able to do self-referrals. 
So if you identify clients in your community area, wherever from, wherever they are may be from, you also have the ability to self-refer those clients back into the department. So just don't think you're limited by the referrals that we send out to you. GORRC assessment services. In order for an assessment to be conducted by the selected respondent, the client must meet the age requirement of the program, live with the child who should not be more than 18 years of age or who is between 19 to 59 years of age who has a severe dis disability, be the primary caregiver of the child and have a legal relationship to the child such as legal custody or guardianship. Intake procedures will be established by the selected respondent to include an interview with a staff member specifically trained and supervised in intake. The caregiver assessment to use must be approved by DFSS and should include the following goals. Should identify the need and determine the reason for counseling, support groups, and or gap filling. Educate the older relative on public or private programs and services available. Ensure that there is no abuse or negligent environment, make referrals when appropriate for other so senior services programs and services and child welfare public assistance programs, identify alternative informal support to provide relief for the family, and evaluate the level of stress and tension of the older relative and family unit. Counseling and support group service requirements, the purpose of individual or group grandparents, or older relative counseling and training is to provide caregivers with opportunities to acquire knowledge and skills to help them adjust to their new role. For individual or group grandparent or older relative counseling, group lectures, classes, workshops, telephonic, and Skype conferences are acceptable. Support groups for grandparents or older relative caregivers emphasize coping strategies, peer support, resources, education, access to services, and offer opportunities to socialize. Topics may include parenting a second time around, providing education and practical experiences on financial matters, housing, legal matters, making decisions, health, child care, moving through resentment and grief, enrichment programs, and challenging family situations. Participants in support groups must receive educational materials such as brochures, handouts, PDFs, et cetera, on topics related to parenting and family issues. Support groups may be held at designated DFSS senior center locations or other locations which are accessible. Child care must be available upon request. Gap filling services, service requirements. Gap filling funds may be utilized to purchase a limited supply of goods and services that complement the care provided by the older relative, when all other resources for such goods and services have been exhausted. Gap filling funds can be utilized for necessities including, but not limited to, purchase of clothing and uniforms, school fees and supplies, other necessities, transportation and food, day camps, summer camps, after school programming and tutoring, purchase of furniture, furniture to ensure a safe living environment, that is bedding, bed, desk for the underage dependent, one-time assistance for payment of rent, mortgage, security deposit, or utilities in the event of threatened eviction or shutoff, legal assistance for guardianship and adoption, eyeglasses, medical copay, copays, durable medical equipment. Gap filling funds cannot be utilized for, including but not limited to, cash assistance or travel assistance, legal assistance for criminal, felony, and or misdemeanor representation, civil lit litigation, previ previously paid expenses, purchase of food supplies for an event, raffle prizes, or pay for trips or activities for the senior or children to attend together. And just so you know, there's a more extensive list uh, attached to the RFP. Uh, the details a little bit more. This is just a uh, condensed version of what's available under gap filling. Reimbursement criteria for gap filling services. Selected respondent must initially pay for goods and services until reimbursement is received. Fiscal procedures to account for every expenditure and receipt of supplemental gap filling payments are required. So 
selected respondent must document staff follow-up to determine if the item or service has been received and met the client's need. Older relatives or family may receive up to $1,000 per child of appropriate goods or services each fiscal year through gap filling funds. For extreme cases and with the written approval of the Senior Services Area Agency on Aging Program Manager, additional funds can be utilized for items or services not mentioned above, as well as for goods or services in excess of $1,000. Performance measure. How are we going to how are we going to determine the success of this program? 80% of the clients who respond to the satisfaction surveys report that the, G, the GRRC services have allowed them to feel less overwhelmed. 80% of clients who respond to the survey report that counseling sessions were effective and increased their ability to cope with caring for children they are raising. 80% of the clients respond to the satisfaction survey report that support groups were effective and allowed them to meet other caregivers uh, to share their concerns. 80% of clients who respond um, report that through caregiver education, they have increased their ability to locate resources to be able to continue uh, raising children and assisting their growth and development. 80% of clients respond, uh, we hope they, feel and hope they are feeling more able to provide care for their kin rather than break up the family and put the children into foster care. To monitor this progress and, rec and recognize intermediate progress toward the world performances, DFS intends to track outcome output metrics that may include, but are not limited to, 200 assessments we conducted annually, 43 clients and, or 380 units of counseling service annually, 50 clients or 83 units of support group services provided annually, 120 clients or 120 uh, units of gap filling services provided annually. 80% of the clients must complete surveys. Strength of the program. Selection criteria. How are we going to select the agency? The process is open to all entities, non-for-profit, for-profit, faith-based, private and public licensed agencies that demonstrate experience serving older adults, specifically within the area of providing care, caregiver child, children services, able to, provide, able to provide services citywide. The applicant demonstrates a clear understanding of the target population and needs and challenges. The applicant clearly defines services to be provided directly or through partnership with other agencies that are appropriate to address the needs of and achieving desired outcomes for the target population. The applicant's proposed program is supported by strong national or local evidence base and or aligns with best practices for the relevant field. The applicant also has an effective approach to identifying and retaining program participants, including rules and regulations that reduce barriers to participation. The applicant demonstrates the evidence of a strong past performance against desired outcome goals and performance metrics and other notable accomplishments. Is no, if no prior experience is available, the applicant should provide a clear rationale for its ability to execute against the program and achieve desired outcomes. The applicant has relevant staff, systems, and processes needed to collect key participant and performance data and evaluate and manage performances. The applicant also has the experience to use in data to inform and improve its services or practices. Reasonable cost, budget justification, and leverage of funds. The applicant demonstrates reasonable impl implementation costs and funding requests relative to its financial and human resources. The proposed budget supports the proposed scope of work or work plan. Overall, the applicant is fiscally sound as evidenced by the financial history and record of the organization, as well as audited financial statements for the equivalent from the current fiscal year. The applicant proposes a reasonable cost per person or per unit given the nature of the services provided and provides justification for the level of funding requested. The applicant leverages other non-city funds to support total program and administrative costs, that is state, federal, foundation, corporate, and individual donations. When is the RFP proposal due? The application deadline is August 6, 2009, 2019 at 12 noon. Again, that's August 6, 2019 at 12 noon. You have until that day to get your completed proposal into the system. Uh, and I truly hope that each individual agency on this call today uh, will submit an application for this uh, much needed services for the residents of Chicago. Uh, if anybody have any questions, take a brief moment for you all to ask any questions you may not have at this time.
those I see uh, individuals have uh, raised their hand and asked questions, you can type the question into your dashboard so we can see your question and we'll be uh, happy to go ahead and get an answer for you. Okay, so we're going to answer uh, the question that you all are posing, and after that, please don't hang up from the call. Uh, uh, Julia Tabbert is going to come in to uh, talk to you all about the technical aspects of completing the RFP. So the for first question is, what is the level of funding? How many clients are expected to be served? The funding level for this uh, grant is $127,721. Again, that's $127,721. Uh, over the course of a over the course of one year of the grant, complete year of the grant, we expect you to serve uh, 43 clients, uh, 300 units of counseling services, 50 clients, or 83 and 83 units of support group services, and 120 units of gap filling services. Uh, but those again are listed within the RFP itself. Uh, what is the total grant amount? We just answered that. That was 127,721. Uh, how many agencies? Um, how many agencies we expect to fund? We're going to fund one agency uh, to run this program citywide. Who administers the satisfaction survey? The, the, the selected agency will be responsible for, uh, we'll, we, are, we have developed a survey. We provide the survey to that agency. The agency is, provide, is responsible for providing that survey to each applicant or each participant uh, as they complete a service under this grant. Uh, what is the budget? Uh, to request, again, that budget amount is $127,721 for the fiscal year. Um, so, uh, so you can't. So the the gap the GRG program is broke is broke up to three components. There's a counseling component, and there's twenty three thousand uh, dollars under the cap under the counseling component. There's ten thousand dollars under the support group, and then the gap filling is ninety four thousand seven hundred twenty one. So that brings the total funding level to one twenty seven seven twenty one. You must um, submit a proposal for the entire program. You cannot select uh, certain elements of the program to apply for. It's uh, all in, everything grant. Um, good morning. We'll absolutely receive a copy of the presentation. Yes, a copy of the presentation will be available at the conclusion of this webinar. Uh, is the program currently operating? Uh, is there an existing uh, pool of participants? So the program is not operating, and so that's why um, we need to get this program out, and we need to get it up and running, and that's why we want to, we're looking for a very strong agency that can pretty much hit the ground, ready to go from day one. Uh, because this program has not been available for the last year. Uh, so we need to get this uh, going again. Well, so the pro so we are, we anticipate awarding this grant uh, and starting uh, by uh, October 1st at the latest date. Um, so we are going to at least push this through as, as fast as possible. We may be able to get some part of this fiscal year in. I can't guarantee that but definitely uh, it'll be available to go October 1st. But we're attempting to get some part of this current fiscal year uh, of this program up and running. Does the organization have to be currently providing counseling or can the organization use referral? You have the ability to use referral partners. You just have to offer that component. How you deliver that component is strictly up to the agency, but that component has to be available for clients. 
Uh, are we going to receive a copy of these slides? Again, the, this, this entire webinar presentation will be available at the conclusion of the webinar. Are the funds for rest of service in addition to? So the grandparent or older, the grandparent or older, oh, the question is, are funds for rest of services in addition to the 127700 so the grand, so our grandparent or older relative uh, does not con contain a direct respite component. However, uh, there are certain categories of respite that we will be allowed to be used under the gap filling component. So we don't have a respite component, but there are certain elements um, that like daycare services, um, um, day camps, summer camps, those are, we consider those to be type of respite services and we will allow those expenditures to be done under the gap filling component. Uh, do you have an assessment to determine if the older adult or qualifies for services? We will provide your agency. We, the agency selected will be provided with a assessment tool for the program. Uh, what constitutes a disability? A disability is constituted. Hold on one second. Let me uh, pull that up for you. Uh, it's, it's generally a, 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 a old adult age 19 to 59 with severe uh, mental or health disabilities. Neuro neurological. Uh, other di uh, disabilities that constitute a disability that constitutes a disability. Um, next question is: So only one agency will be selected for that is correct. One agency will be selected to run this grant citywide. What is direction? The, the grant is the grant is one year. Our, our year runs October first to September thirtieth. So again, October first to September thirtieth is the fiscal year. Uh, so we are trying to get this grant up in this current fiscal year, but definitely full on for the next fiscal year beginning October 1st. Um, are you are you posting these questions? Those, these questions will be available as well as the uh, PowerPoint will be available at the conclusion of this webinar. Next question is, Are you, does the family have to be in a legal guardianship situation? Most times this does not occur in black and brown communities. Um, as long as that, that older relative has Responsibility for taking care of that minor child, we okay, that will be acceptable. I mean, and again, thank you all. Those are some great questions, um, absolutely great questions. And I'm going to turn this over to Julia Talbert, who will go over the other technical aspects of this this grant. Hello, uh, this is Julia Talbert. So I'm the person that you generally call if you're having problems or you have questions about how to ma manipulate or finish your grant in the OPER, in the e-procurement system. Um, what we have up here is just a list of some basic supports and um, links for you. So if you have questions, if you need to, if you need to um, make an application in iSupplier, or you need to start an application or start an account for yourself in iSupplier, you're going to go to that e-procurement support at cityofchicago.org. But other than that, you really don't, that's going to throw you over to the Department of Procurement Services. Other than that, to, to get registered into the I supplier into the I supplier environment, which allows you to access the e-procurement application, you're really not going to need that. What you're going to, what is much more as the useful number is the technical assistance for delegate agencies, which is OBMGMU at cityofchicago.org, or you call 312-744-0358, or you can call me, and my number is all over the RFP, it's all over the application, and it's probably at the end of this at the end of this PowerPoint, 312-743-1679, and we will help get you set up. Um, there are also online some good training materials and videos about how to do different things. I've also posted some stuff, uh, some PowerPoint PDFs onto the DFSS website, at the, and those are found at the bottom of all the alerts for all of the RFPs. Um, we can move to the next slide. Um, so, but, but generally speaking, my, here are some tips and, that I have for you guys. First of all, as you all know, start early. Register, if you don't have an account into iSupplier, register, get that account. The iSupplier process is gonna take a couple of days for you to get into the system. You, 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 send an, you send an email, they send it back, that might take a couple of days before you get it. Then you have to set up the account. That, that doesn't take terribly long, but it does take a few days, so give yourself the time. Uh, I want you to review your, the RFP narratives and the application questions. They look different. We're changing them all the time, and we want you to be prepared to respond. And I want you to look in the scope and the, uh, the selection criteria in the RFP document, and really the scope informs the evaluation and selection criteria. 
And those things are inform the application question. So if you have a question about how to answer an application question, use that RFP document, that scope, those selection criteria to inform your answer. Usually, we're not giving you the answer. We want to see what you're capable of, but you should have a very good idea of what we are looking for in a provider by using that, uh, by, by looking through the RFP document, looking at the selection criteria. There are no trick questions in these things. Um, also, we always appreciate it if you use spell check. Um, next. So, when you are in the ear procurement environment, there is a 4,000 character limit, which includes punctuation and spaces, and that is for each application question. It's not a total, but that does, it's characters, not words. So, you are, uh, you know, bonus points for being succinct. Uh, I, the, the system itself is not going to tell you if you're over the limit, so we really, I really strongly suggest that you write your answer in the word processing program of your choice and you do that character count so that you know that you're not over the limit. Uh, one of the features of e-procurement that I really like is that you can submit your application and later amend it up until the due date. If you, so, and I suggest that people submit early. Um, you know, my, my general mantra for these things is submit early, save often. So, the opportunity, the e-procurement system is pretty fail-safe. I've yet to see it crash, to be honest with you, and it's been operating a little over two years at this point. That being said, it, um, it some, some can, it works better in an, the Internet Explorer environment than it does in, say, Chrome. I suggest people that they save often. A lot of times, your computer might not interface so smoothly with the e-procurement system and the e-procurement system times out. If you use the back button in your browser, it will, the e-procurement system will stop saving your stuff. So never use the back button if you can, because, and save stuff often. Um, I have been telling people recently, when you go to submit your application in e-procurement, you have to go through a series of screens. And I actually have a PowerPoint on how to submit. It's not a matter of just hitting submit and it is gone. You hit submit, you most often, nine times out of 10, you're gonna get an error message about something that was not filled out, something that you didn't know, something that the system doesn't like that you will need to resolve. You are gonna to need to check a box, you are gonna to need to put in your name, you're gonna to need to check another box. You know, it's not just you hit submit and whoosh, it's gone. It's more like you hit submit and like 10 steps later, it might be gone. So you know, when you go to submit your application, you should give yourself 15 to 30 minutes to get through this process to resolve the issues that you might encounter with it. Like maybe you're one of those lucky people and it's five steps and good, boom, you're good. But most of the time it is not. So that means do not, you know, like you really do not get this, take this thing down to the wire because it will not, I know a number we have, every time we have an application come in, there is somebody who thinks that they're gonna hit submit and it is gonna be gone and then they do not get their application in and they are upset and so are we. So avoid the rush and submit early. Late applications will not be accepted and the system cannot accept them. Uh, we will have to re-release the RFP to accept a late application and we would we really do not wanna re-release RFPs because that is a lot of time and it's not a good use of, of government dollars. Make use of the e-procurement hotline. It is online standard business hours, nine to five, Monday through Friday. Make use of me, I am also online standard business hours, Monday through Friday, nine to five. Okay, can we go to the next? Mm -hmm. And, you know, good luck. In terms of accepting an end addendum, I have a couple of screens here. So when you have to go to, you know, if we do an amendment, which is how we usually post our FAQs, you have to acknowledge the amendment. You can see here, there's the, uh, that is circled. And then you, if you want to read the amendment, which we really, like you to do, you can hit that review changes. Basically everything in the, this is the screen from the e-procurement section. Everything in blue generally takes you to somewhere else. See this return to work list that will take you back to the page that you want. You can go to the, or, you know, the home page. Um, we'll go for the next. So that, that's what that looks like. I also have a, 
a more detailed PowerPoint that I can send and it is posted on the DSSS website about how to accept amendments. Um, if you have program questions, you can definitely call Ed. Here's his number. Uh, if you have e-procurement questions, you can call me or you can call the OBM hotline. Just so you know, I will be out of the office next week. Uh, so call the OBM hotline for your e-procurement questions. And we look forward to receiving your application. And um, best of luck to you. Okay, I see we asked the first question before. This next question, what are the total grants able to receive? I'm assuming you're assuming the total grant. The total grant, again, the total grant amount is $127,721. Again, that's $127,721, and that breaks down $23,000 for the counseling component, $10,000 for the support group component, and $94,721 under the gap filling component. Uh, you have another question? No. Okay, so um, if there are any other questions, please feel free. You can type them in your um, search box now if you need to um, before we conclude this webinar. Any other further, any last questions, please feel free. We're going to give you a couple of minutes to type in any last questions you may have. So the question is, do the administrative funds go under gap filling services? When you complete your budget, uh, you'll be completing a line item budget and all your, whatever your administrative costs and all the other costs must fit under your line item budget. Um, there was not, there would not be a separate line for administrative costs. Uh, so you need to think about all that when you apply for this RFP. I don't see any other questions. Again, I want to absolutely thank each and every one of you all that logged on to this call. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So there are some other questions. Okay. So um, what do you recommend for staffing patterns for this program? Are counseling services provided by a licensed provider or a person with a degree in social work and or psychological would satisfy their need? So uh, we don't re we don't have a recommendation for a staffing pattern. Uh, we hope that you have the staff available to man the. Um, of course, you need the fiscal people to manage your gap filling component. Uh, you also need counselors to, uh, for your support group and your individual counseling sessions. Um, so that's, that's pretty much up to the agency, and that's what we look for you all to propose within your proposal for this RFP. So there seem to be a group of questions concerning the amount. The, so the program uh, budget amount total is $127,721. So when I say there's $23,000 available for counsel, that means the agency will, will be reimbursed up to 20, no more than up to $23,000 for counseling services, whether that's individual counseling or group session. Whatever your billable amount is, you cannot exceed that $23,000. Uh, support groups. Uh, that's ten thousand for support groups. So that means that you are the agency that's selected will can build this department up to ten thousand dollars for group settings for group group counseling. So again, that amount is going to be based on the budget you submit and what you're proposing to us, the department, as, as your line item rate for your individual session. So whatever your counselor get paid for a one hour session, that's how, that's how you're going to list your line. So but you cannot exceed. $10,000 under the support group, and you cannot expend, exceed expenditures of $23,000 under counseling. The amount that's going directly to 
Our participant is the gap filling amount. That's $94,721. That is dollars that have to be spent on the grandparent or older relatives uh, to provide imported gap filling services. And again, the gap filling component is a reimbursable, uh, well, all of this is a reimbursable program. There, you will not receive any funds up front in this grant. All, all funds are reimbursable um, to the agency. So you, sh you should be able to uh, financially carry this program until your, reimburse to your reimbursement comes in from the city. Uh, next question, um, I'm looking for, you know, what, is, uh, what is the definition of support, of the support category? Uh, support groups. Uh, so that category. That so the question is, what is the definition of the support category? I'm assuming you're saying the support groups. So that's having support groups. Um, and whether you have it at your facility, whether you host it at some of our DFS senior centers, which I think you would be a great opportunity to capture those centers, those things that are into that are coming to our senior centers. It's just a support group. Is that what that is? Um, uh, grandparents, older relatives coming in to meet each other, to talk, to sit around, to uh, share thoughts and information. That's what support group is. Um, it sounds like, where am I missing? Um, so the question is, does that mean the client received the $20,000? That's $20,000. Again, those are not client funds. The client direct funds to the client is the gas filling funds of $94,721. Uh, covers the services only, not staff or men cost. Again, staff and administration costs, all those are built, you're going to have to build those costs into your unit rate when you're on your budget. So your budget will be a unit rate budget and you're going to propose to us how all your cost, all your costs must be built into that unit rate. Sounds like the grant. Is there, yes, this is federally funded. This program is funded under the Old American Act. So it is federal funding. Should we then understand that we have 33,000 for staff and other um, expenses given that the 94,000 is exclusive for so again, so in, in your and so I, I I see your question. So yes, yeah, so that thirty three thousand is, is going to be reimbursable to staff because that's going to be your staff time that are going to provide the counseling and support group. So yeah, that that would be uh, staff time for your counselors um, agency. So that is the, that is that would be what the thirty three thousand is for. Because yes, yeah, so again, the ninety four thousand seven twenty one exclusively for gas filling services. Uh, do I see any other questions? Okay, I think I answered all the questions. Again, these are some great questions. Uh, I appreciate you all for being on this call. I hope each and every one of you all submit a proposal for this RFP. Uh, we are looking for this program to be revived and to thrive in the city of Chicago. Again, thank you all. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all's proposals. Uh, have a great day.